Hello, everybody. Thank you for clicking on. It is uh, Friday night, the 12th day of April, four days after the Great American Eclipse. And uh, tonight, Chris is going to be joining us coming up here soon. We will also have um, some reviews people have given on the movie Civil War. Um, in case you missed it, I did a little recorded episode last night after seeing the movie Civil War. And uh, go back and, and check that out if you haven't seen it. And uh, if you did watch it, thank you very much. And thank you for being here, uh, whether you're watching live or watching at your convenience. It is greatly appreciated. Your time is greatly appreciated. And we will uh, not misuse that time. As I said, Chris coming up in a few minutes. And um, before that, we will get right to the reviews of the movie Civil War. Again, um, I was um, fortunate to be able to see it yesterday before it came out in wide release and um, uh, did the review on it. If, if you haven't watched the review again, please go back and watch it. It's about eight minutes, eight minutes ish long. Um, it is not, it's the movie is not what I thought it was going to be. I was pleasantly surprised uh, that it wasn't what I th thought it was going to be. Now, that being said, as you'll see from these reviews coming up here, um, the, Let's say the right, the far right wing of America is giving this movie horrible reviews. And it's primarily because um, of the character that plays the president and the president and the uh, portrayal that um, this is a bad guy. This is a guy that got a third term in office. Uh, only for his power and chose his power over the, uh, the people of America and the people revolted. And, um, yeah, that's what, uh, that's what led to what, uh, what you'll see if you do go see the movie. And I recommend you see the movie. It's, it's not a propaganda piece. It's not a, you know, it's not a, let's go to war. Let's have a civil war piece. It's not at all. If anything, I hope everyone sees it as a deterrent, as a reminder that that we do not want this here. Um, so the first review we have, and I don't think I can get this any. Uh, there we go. I can get it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, basically, no spoilers. Um just has some of the quotes from the movie in it. Um, we also have a uh, review. I'm pretty surprised by some of the criticism this movie is receiving. I guess people thought it was going to be more of a straightforward war film based on the trailers. But watching the film, I didn't feel misled at all. And in fact, I'm pretty pleasantly surprised with what we got. Though I can understand it, I think it's a more appropriate to call this film a thrill or suspense movie than a war movie, though we do get some pretty impressive combat sequences in the film. They gave the movie five stars. Um, this is a two-star review. This is not a movie about documenting the unfolding events of a modern American civil war like the trailers lead you to believe. This is a movie about self-centered and complacent journalists and not a good one at that. Um, again, two stars. This, this person was a, this person was expecting uh, a, you know, a pro far right um, propaganda piece to prompt war. And I was expecting the same thing in all honesty. I was, I, I do not give two stars because as the review of a head said, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, director Alex Garland hits the ground running and never stops. This dystopian near future tail whip cracks loudly and without mercy from the first frame. We're kept at back foot pace, piercing 
together a background narrative that is about as fragmented as a cluster bomb. The unfolding story is all the more disturbing because it's in bits, a bit like America. It transpires. Culture wars on a cocktail off nitri nitroglycerin and spice, you could call it. I don't know if I would call it that. Um, some plot holes ranging from mild to severe, along with some creative decisions that make me question few credentials. It is the only reason it is, it is missing a star. It would be missing a star. However, due to the Red Hats protesting this movie due to its president, played by Nick Offerman, who appears weak and decides that his presidency for the third term is more important than the well-being of our nation. Um, Offerman is dressed in barber to bear a striking resemblance to the former TV show host Donald Trump. So I'm giving this another star to counteract because no movie deserves to be reviewer bombed over politics. It is the precursor to self-maintained propaganda. This movie was a powerhouse of talent. Kristen Dunst has given us one of the best performances of her career. Well, that got a little too big there. And uh, we'll do one more here while we wait for Chris to join. We're going to be talking about Haiti. We're also going to be talking about Israel and Iran uh, activities and uh, new information on, on both of those. Uh, while the premise might strike some as silly, a president who unsurped a third term and attacked our own cities, uh, in parentheses Trump, facing off against an armed rebellion of secessionist states, California and Texas, the movie gets its strength by showing an unmoored America falling into anarchy and chaos. Cities burn, highways are strewn with abandoned vehicles and bodies hang from highway overpasses. The warfare, as depicted, is unsettling. Um, seeing American cities resembling Gaza, Beirut, or Baghdad is so is something that will stay with you as well as a scene involving star Kristen Dunst's real life husband Jesse Flemons as a psychopath. Oh, as a psycho. Gee, let's get this right here. As a psychopathic militia man. So um, there we go. Some of the reviews for um, for the movie Civil War, and again, I gave a reaction, not really a review. I didn't uh, I didn't talk about some of the things that that was that were was discussed in those reviews. There, I just basically give you an idea of the theme and the tone, uh, without giving away any spoilers. So. Still waiting on Chris. I don't know. Something may have happened because there there's a lot going on. And if uh, if you've watched the show, you know that um, Chris is involved with um, counterterrorism and uh, military training. And he's our military and counterterrorist expert. And he is right here joining us now. I didn't hear you come on. Hello, Chris. How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself, Barry? Good. Good. I'm not hearing you through the headphones. Okay. So how, I, about, how about now? Is that better? Yeah, that's a little better. There we okay. go. Great. All right. So um, let's start out with uh, let's start out with a reminder to everybody um, just where Haiti is right right here, sharing uh, sharing the island of uh, with with the Dominican Republic. And we've got Haiti, we've got Cuba, we've got Miami, Florida. So um, 150 miles roughly from uh, the end of Florida to Haiti, easily reached by missiles if, um, if a, a foreign country were to decide um, to pay Haiti enough to put a base on there. And um, something that I think might have gotten through to the United States because um, it's it didn't I we were given the impression let's say that Haiti was not a high priority to anyone and things have changed since then haven't they Chris well as always uh, there as you know there are no constants within uh, our government right 
Right. So one day they may say something, but behind closed doors is something completely different. So um, my my concern with Haiti is this whole transitional council and um, them now not allowing certain um, political parties to be on, you know, the ballot or, you know, or should we say with that transitional uh, uh, presidential council. So the, the issue behind that is, is this is a chance for everyone that's involved in Haiti to actually have a say on what needs to be done and also um, appoint a president. But before we go into appointing a president, people have to understand about um, top-down processing. Uh, when we talk about top-down processing as opposed to bottom-up processing. Okay. Okay, top-down processing means that um, what they're doing right now, so they want, they want to appoint a president, okay? But that president does not have, that president does not have the, um, should we say the, um, support from the community you see and because he doesn't have that support from the community that's gonna fail does that make sense yes so if if you have support from the community you're gonna that's what the community wants so they're in an office you see mm -hmm. so when we talk about bottom or we talk about um bottom up like cherizier and Guy philippe they have all the community support or getting they're gonna go you know, they're gonna garner all the community support for the simple fact that they're working bottom up. Does that make sense? Yes. So so like the whole community will be able to will be able to support them. But better yet, to really garner that community support, if Guy Philippe and uh Shriz, uh Jimmy Barbecue Cherise and all those community leader, leaders what if they put uh what we call social services okay if they start to administer social services within their own communities okay and like and we always talk about allowing that humanitarian assistance to come through that that will give them that's really going to bolster the, their legitimacy okay all right and if you do that then jimmy barbecue shares a if if well, well from what i've heard that they've started their own party um as, as i think we we talked about that one time on the show uh if those gang or if those uh community leaders all came together and created their own political party and actually boosted uh uh jimmy barbecue shares as their leader of that political party that's the way to actually become um president of, of the United States, or president, hear me, President of the United States, but President of Haiti, and then um, that way you actually control what goes on. You see, mm -hmm. the other way, the other way is to overthrow the government. You see, and what you're in the process of doing, but ultimately, I think sure, uh, Jimmy Barbecue Cherise wants to get rid of the oligarchs. Okay. Um, the oligarchs or the elites that actually control the gangs, because if you can, if, if they're controlling the gangs, then they're, they're really, really pitting the, um, the poor blacks against other poor blacks. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, and that's not what, um, it, you know, Haiti wasn't even founded on that. You see, it, it was founded on revolution and, um, should we say getting rid of, um their oppressors you see so what share with the, what jimmy barbecue shares a is doing is he's um fighting the system along with the rest of his community leaders community members he's fighting the system to make haiti a better place for haitians but a lot of haitians don't see it that way to me it's clear okay and a lot of a lot of the international community won't look at it that way Right. They, they look at it as if, you know, he's just, uh, you know, uh, a gang member, you know, just starting some trouble. But no, actually, he's not. OK, uh, 
Um, he's I really believe he's you know about the people, okay, and tr really trying to make Haiti better. But you can't do that when your oppressor, right, and and the oppressors are the elites who are not even Haitian. They they're actually from the Levant, okay. So they're like they're from Syria and and Lebanon, and uh, they're not from there. Okay, they're not a part of the transatlantic slave trade, but yet they control what goes on in Haiti, especially in the Port-au-Prince area, you see. So if if they get rid of them, then that's they've knocked out two two big two big problems, right? They've knocked out the government of Haiti and then also they've knocked out the oligarchs. But then the last thing that they're really going to be fighting about is the uh, the international security force that's going to come in. And if they beat them, then guess what? Clear sailing. And in 2025, guess what they can do? That political party that that beat um, uh, uh, the international security forces overthrew the government of overthrew the government of Haiti, but then also um, defeated the oligarchs. That's that's the political party that's going to get uh, that's going to be put in office. I, I just watch. I was um, I was sent a I was sent an email um, email at AmericanDoofus Gmail dot com. I was sent an email from someone that that doesn't watch the show but was informed about the show, and uh, she may be watching she may be watching tonight because I told her I was going to respond. Um, she said that what the media shows is the worst of Port-au-Prince. They do not show Peytonville where things are things things are quite different than they are in Port-au-Prince. She also said, ask, ask Chris, ask your expert why the banking system continues to run, why food continues to come in and go out, and why if the United Nations has such a vast compound in Port-au-Prince and already has international soldiers, why they even have to be there because the food and water keeps going or the, the food and the supplies keep coming in and out. Mm -hmm. The exports keep going out, especially molasses. And um, um, why, why do they need the United Nations there? Because the water's coming anyway, the yeah. food's so, um, there are, in her words, there are two Hades. There's the Haiti that is shown to the outside world, which is primarily the worst of Port-au-Prince. Then there is the Haiti of this elite oligarchy, um, 300 families, 300 families with over that are multimillionaires mm -hmm. living, living on the Island. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what, what, Sure, Bobby Cherizier, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, his his whole thing is to get rid of those oligarchs. Okay, just totally get rid of them altogether. And the thing, you know, the thing, the people are turning against the gangs. Okay, when mm -hmm. in fact, when in fact, they should be turned against the oligarchs because it's the oligarchs that control the gangs. You see, so if if the the the, the anger and violence is misdirected at this point in time. You see, but is it? But but if the reports, if some of the reports were getting, is it really misdirected? Because it seems like some of the gangs. I mean, that we talked about the last time we were together on Friday or on Wednesday. The Izo uh, uh, Izo, right, 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 and but him but, basically but bragging about raping women and murdering innocent people and right right but that's coming from the the oligarchs do you see that's coming directly from the oligarchs the oligarchs are the ones that fund him there were a whole bunch of hundred dollar bills in that video right right but also Ezo I think Ezo is involved in some drug trafficking as well so he could be getting money you know from from that drug trafficking too they had plenty of money in that video oh, yeah I'm sure I'm sure. But let's 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 go back and answer our questions and we'll start with the last one first and work our way back. Okay. 
So could you could you go back uh, and uh, tell me what the uh, the questions were so I can um, give her an answer? The last the last question was the United Nations has a big compound there with international okay. soldiers. Mm-hmm. Um, and and they say they are there to secure the um, flow of humanitarian aid, the flow of food coming in and the flow of exports going out. But they never leave the UN compound. So why are they really there? Okay. So, so here's the thing. They, that's what they say. But in all actuality, they're not going to put their people out to get injured during this this situation okay um the un listen the un is not really meant for it's meant for doing peacekeeping operations but i can't really say they're really good at kinetic operations i kind of stay away me personally anything the un does i kind of stay away from it i okay. really do. all right okay mm-hmm. um because they're not they're not really um, good at what like this type of warfare you see going on right now. But the, you know, the whole thing about it is, is they're supposed to be helping with the flow of HA humanitarian aid. And they're not even doing that. And that's probably coming from higher saying, you know what, just let it be. Okay. Okay. um, I I hope that answers our question because that that's really a, a question or the UN, you know, like how come you're not doing anything? You know, you, that this is your mission. Why aren't you doing anything? Because they really don't feel like um, bringing dead UN soldiers back because that's eventually what's going to happen. You see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then the other, the other main point was that um, the narrative is being controlled by those outside of Haiti because all they show is the, worst parts of Port-au-Prince and they do not show where the oligarchs live. They do not show the, the area where the 300 multimillionaire families live. And so, so, and, and, and that's another issue. So if you want to present a a totally negative environment or totally negative perspective of something, you show someone what the worst, you don't show them, you know, the best, of of what of, it's not even what your country has because that that pay, that uh, Paytonsville is a very small part of the Port-au-Prince area. Okay, it's a very small part. So if you show people that area, they'd be like, "Wow, that's really nice," because that's the areas that you don't see, right? Right. That's the areas you don't see. But if I take you down to the uh, to uh, the center of Port, uh, to the center of Port-au-Prince, where all the fighting is going on, where where they're attacking the the presidential palace, that's should we say the lower area of Port-au-Prince, and that's what we call like, well, it's not that nice, and that's where the fighting is going to occur. Okay, but but um, it, as many times as I've been to Haiti, and I've been up there to you know, like uh, Paytonsville, it, it's a really really nice area. You see, it's a really nice area. And up in the mountains, up in the hills. It's, it's, it's Yeah, I mean, uh, Haiti is extremely mountainous, okay? Extremely mountainous. So if, if your government, like why well, stayed in Delmas, it just, you, you get on you get on a, a tap tap and you go up the hill, maybe like maybe a couple miles and, and you're actually in, in, in Paytonsville. And it, it's, you know, really, it's, it's a totally different atmosphere. You see, totally different, totally different atmosphere than the lower poor Port-au-Prince or even Delmas. It really is, and and you'll you'll find more people actually speak English, in 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 that area. Um, you'll see a lot more people that that kind of look like they're mixed, half black, half white, right, in that area. So I mean, it's it, it's pretty nice, okay. But they don't want people to know that their places in Haiti like that. They, because what do they show you on television? They always show you the poor, right? The the the, the like the places where um Jimmy Barbecue shares the uh lives, right? And those neighborhoods where it's it's horrible. 
is deplorable living. They won't show you the opposite where the millionaires live. They won't do it's that. Kinda, it's kind of like it, it's kind of like uh, they portray Africa, right? You know, they Africa in general is this poor, desolate, um, you know, uneducated tribal people, uh, and that's not Africa at all. And Africa no. is not a country, by the way. Um, Africa is a is a continent of nations. There are several nations that make up Africa. Um, one of our leading politicians had trouble with that. So, <laughs> um, now now the reason the reason that you know the reason that there is interest in uh, in Haiti. Um, the country has a gross domestic product of 19.93 billion, but only a G GDP per capita of 1800. So I think if nothing else, I, I hope the viewers understand the discrepancy GDP per individual is $1,800 a year, but the it's, country, a than, it's a little less than that, man. It's it probably is now because this you're right because this came out this this came out before uh what's going on now right. um the total gdp agriculture um industry com uh, contributes 21.9 and 20.8 respectively that is uh, agriculture and industry nation mainly exports essential oils they export apparel, coffee, cocoa, uh, cocoa, bitter oranges, mangoes. Uh, the mining sector remains largely untapped. And um, um, I don't know if it's the next paragraph down. Guess what the country has, Chris? Recent findings yeah. shown that the nation of Haiti might have some of the largest oil reserves in the world. Oil yeah. reserves are estimated they could be as larger than those of Venezuela, as mm -hmm. well as natural gas. They also may have one of the largest marble mines in the world. There is gold. Uh, up to $20 billion worth of gold. There's copper. Um so controlling Haiti is a lot more significant than, uh, than perhaps, than perhaps we as a country want to acknowledge. Well, yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, the thing about it is, is this is like, this wouldn't be like the first occupation that's been in Haiti. So I'm pretty sure they knew about that stuff before. Right. I'm just pointing it out because the right. average viewer, the average viewer doesn't know these things. Right, right, right. So, and, so, so like a lot, you, you know, you'll hear a lot of people talk about Haiti and they, oh, they're going in for the iridium and they're doing this and they're, you don't need an invasion to do that. All you need is the, all you need is the government's permission to go in the mining. Yeah. Like, but, like, go ahead. Barry, you still there? Yeah, you you I th you cut out. There. Yeah, you cut out there for a second. Yeah, yeah. So so like for them, other companies or countries to to do their mining in Haiti, and which is going to happen like in in the north in the in the northwest of the country. That's where the mining really occurs, and if the president allows that to occur, then so be it. So it's not like. You know, they're going into um, Port-au-Prince to do mining or anything like that. All that stuff's in the north north and the northwest of the country, upper northwest, you see. Um, and, and, they've, and they've known that for some time. So it's not, like, well, this is like a recent discovery. It, it's, been, it's been known for an extended period of time. So it's, it's really nothing new. But um, I think the the most powerful thing to that of me is a country that's bringing in $19 billion a year 
and its average citizen is making less than $1,800 a month lives on right, that. Right, right, right. So the whole thing about $1,800 I mean, a year, $1, not $1,800 a year. A, year, a year, not a month. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, there, there's money, obviously, and take a guess who controls that. If, if that's what it is, take a guess who's controlling that. The oligarchs. The, the elites, right? Yeah. And, and and like I said, they're not even, they're not even. They're not even Haitian. They're not even Afri of African descent. They are, they, like I said, they're from, from Syria, uh, the, the, you know, from Lebanon. They're not, they're not even, they came in the late 1800s, early 1900s. They're not even part of the transatlantic slave trade. They, they are, they are from the Levant, but yet they control what goes on in the country. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And this is I why Sharizia, and this is why Sharizia, and and the, his his group wants to get rid of these oligarchs because that that's ridiculous. You're not from there, but yet you're going to keep the rest of these people poor. You see? Mm -hmm. And they fought, and they fought. Their ancestors fought to be free from slavery, but yet they become free black. Here you people, and here these guys are. They took it over, gave gave the you know uh, these blacks guns, right, to fight against other poor people. You see, for 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 yeah for the oligarchs' benefit. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's a no go. And 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 here's the thing, Barry. Here's the thing. We talked. I mean, you, you we talked about the uh, the civilians, um, the citizens turning against the um, the gangs. Okay. I, and I and what you said, you know, what, what is correct. You know, the the citizens, you know, should be rightfully be attacking the gangs to to a certain extent. Okay, but. If Cherizier and those leaders met with, um, should we say the the other leaders, like the, the citizens leaders from from those communities as well, and said, "Hey, look, you know, you know, we screwed up. Okay, this this is the oligarchs that had us do this for X, Y, and Z. Maybe we should band together and get rid of that problem all the way around." Okay, get rid of that problem all the way around, and we won't attack you ever again because ultimately that came from the oligarchs. You see? Yeah. Talk, talk to the citizens. You know, those community leaders should be talking to the citizens because ultimately, hear this out: when those when those uh, forces come in, you're going to need those citizens. You see, because you don't want those um, those security forces making friends with those civilians that don't like you, you see, because yeah. they're going to get the community support. You don't want that. So you need to start, like I said, that whole uh, social service thing, they need to start doing those communities, that whole humanitarian aid thing, they need to start doing because when this thing kicks off, a lot of people are going to start losing their lives. Yes. Okay. And because of that, they're going to have to start to recruit. Now, where are you going to recruit from if you have if you have those people already angry at you and, right. and they're trying to kill you? You see? Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you've seen this. The United States is considering arming the armed forces of Haiti for the first time since their disbandment in the 1990s. This potential decision marks a significant shift in U.S. policy towards Haiti's military and reflects a reevaluation of Haiti's security needs in response to escalating gang violence and challenges faced by the Haiti National Police. Um, had you heard that? Because this this just popped up. All I right. Just, so, so when I was in Haiti in, in 2018, right? Yes. I, I was there to... Um, actually talk to them, talk to the Haitian, or of course talk to our government first um, about training the the Haitian 
um, army, right? And then, you know, go talk to them about it. But here's the thing. At that time in 2018, our government didn't have a relationship. Our DOD didn't have a relationship with uh, the Haitian military. And it was due to all those human rights violations. You see? But mm -hmm. now that something has occurred, but now that something has occurred, they want to be, they want to, okay, yeah, we're going to arm you. But what do you know? <clears throat> excuse me. If that problem existed back then, then it still exists now. But you're willing to waive that because there's a, there, I guess you see the bigger problem. So now you want to arm the, the Haitian, um, military the army and i'm like well i think i kind of said well, you know maybe you need to build that relationship with them early so in case something like this happens you're already set you see right. what i'm saying yeah forward and i'll never forget. right and and i can remember what the defense attache told me he's like this he's like well we can't do that that's you know that's we don't have that relationship with them and we're not going to start to build a relationship with them just for the simple fact of all the human rights problems they've had before in the past. But now you're doing it. You see, you, you, you see, do you see how our government does not think ahead? Do you see what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, this, this comes out from the foreign policy uh, Council of Canada. Canada welcomes the publication of the decree creating the Transitional Presidential Council in Haiti. This Council of National Unity is a step in the right direction to restore security, law, and order, and democracy in Haiti. Yeah, okay. Well, once again, um, I think I said that there were two groups that were not put on that council. And one of them was uh, with Guy Philippe's people, and the other one was with, with, with uh, Cherizier's political yeah. party. Right. Th th those two uh, political parties were not permitted to be on there. Okay. So here's the thing the people of Haiti said, you know, we don't want this to occur at all. But what's the, what's the United States government and international community? They want to they cram it down their throats. You see? Mm -hmm. You need to listen to the people and what the people want. And this is when we talk about top-down processing. Okay. Right. They're telling you, the Haitian people are telling you, we don't want that. So they're not supporting, they're not going to support this whatsoever. So it's going to fail. You see, if you don't have the community support, it will fail all day long. So what's going to happen is it's, it's just going to continue with Cherise A., and Guy Philippe, and they're eventually going to overthrow the government, right? They're going to they're going to beat back the uh, those security forces, and they're take out the oligarchs, and those two are going to end up in power. Watch, and there's nothing that anyone can say about it, nothing, because now it's going to be what the people want. And Guy Philippe said this: he's like, let the people decide what they want. Why are you deciding for for us? You see, they treat the they treat the Haitians as if they're like their children, like they can't make their own decisions. And and see, that's part of the oppression. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's part of the oppression. You want to keep your foot and tell people what they're gonna do, right? Meanwhile, this is the first free first free republic, black republic in the world, one to rebel one to revolution, and you're gonna tell them, oh, this is what's best for you. That doesn't that sound like the oppressor? It does, <laughs> right? Yes. Doesn't, that sound, doesn't that sound like a slave master telling the slave, "Well, you don't know what's good for you. You don't know what's you don't know what's best for you." You see, Chris, we'll you. I just got this message. Uh, one of my dreams is for the real sovereign nations in Africa, like Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger, to uh, Niger to have completed the federation and um, protected from the declining empires to initiate a diplomatic relationship with Haiti. The Haitian people need better black allies. Right. So, okay. There's, um, 
what there's um a, a a group in Africa. I forgot the name of it. Okay, and they I think they petitioned. I think Haiti petitioned to be part of it. This happened a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, and and the Africans denied them. Okay, they 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 denied them. Okay, they they're like this. Well, you're Caribbean black. You're not like really African black. So we're gonna we're gonna we're not gonna permit you to to be um, a member. You might be an observer, but you can't be a member of 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 this group. And I forgot, you know, I, I forgot what the name of the group was, but um, that's exactly what happened. Because I, I mean, at, at the time, I was like really big on that. I'm like, oh man, Haiti's you know Haiti can petition to be part of this group out of Africa. And um, but but the the whole continent of Africa and and the members of the, of that group said no you you can't you can't do that uh, you know you're not going to be accepted but we'll, we'll we'll accept you as an observer and that's what what it was but back on but if if you want to if you want to continue on this whole Haiti thing bottom up bottom up stability begins at the grassroots level okay. And that's why Cherizie and Guy Philippe will ultimately be victorious in what they're doing. Okay. Um, all right. Let's let's skip over for next the remaining fifteen minutes or so. Um, Israel and Iran. Yep. Uh, Hezbollah. We assume um, Hezbollah was firing missiles. Uh, it was nighttime in Israel. It was afternoon, early evening here. Uh, and Hezbollah unleashed uh, a lot of missiles towards northern Iraq, uh, northern Israel. Uh, most of them were taken out by the Iron Dome. Um, is this is this the beginning of this weekend attack? Uh, Biden was asked today. Um, is it, you know, he said the attack's coming sooner rather than later and said that we stand behind Israel. Um, Israel came out 40 minutes ago. I mean, Iran came out 40 minutes ago and, um, told the U S that if the, that if America defends Israel against its forthcoming retaliation for the Damascus strike, it will consider the U S a viable target as well. Um, what do you see happening over the next the next two days, Saturday and Sunday here in so, uh, so Israel. You know, in so, the you, so, so you do know Biden told Iran not to do it, right? Right. He, yes, I, I didn't add that. But yes, he also said don't do it. So, so the thing about it is if that's just like saying if I punch you in the face and you, you know, you are a bystander, you are so close to me saying, Hey, don't hit him back. Like you look at you look at him. Like, are you out your mind? He's getting pummeled. You just punched me in the face. Like, are you kidding me? Do you think I'm not going to hit you back? Like that, that, like that, what, what our government did is just beyond stupid. Like I, I have no idea why they even said that or even, even did that. Like, who in the right mind? What if if I punch you in the face? Would you even sit there? Would you even sit there and listen to them if if someone came up and said, "Hey, don't hit him back"? Would you, would you even would you even consider that? No, exactly. No. And you know, I mean, it's it's pretty easy to prove if um, if Iran bombed our embassy. Let's say Iran bombed the U.S. embassy in Turkey. Mm -hmm. Um. And that's all that happened was that embassy was taken out. Turkey was not damaged in any way, shape or form. And it was notified. And uh, we would declare war within, within days at the, at the least. Of course, of course we, we would, we would hammer any, any we would hammer Turkey and, and Iran. Right. We would hammer oh. Iran for doing it and Turkey for letting it happen. Exactly. Right. So I don't know why the United States is even sitting up there saying that to them, because all you have to do is reverse it, just like you said. And and guess what? The United States would just pummel Iran and we would hit 
targets wherever they are. That's just what we would do. Okay, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So for them to come out and say something as stupid as that, don't do it. I like, I'm sure that I told Khomeini is, is sitting there like, like, are you smoking crack? <laughs> you really think for one minute? You know, do you really yeah. think for one minute I'm going to listen to you? Just, I, I don't know. I, I don't think Joe Biden's smoking crack, but I, I, I cannot, um, I cannot honestly imagine, Chris, the American public going along with this for much longer. Um, <laughs> but here we are. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But here we are. Yeah. All right. Um, so, are you? Are you hearing anything? Have you heard anything as far as like, uh, you know, it's going to go down this weekend? Um, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing that. Look for uh, look for attacks from all sides with uh, missile attacks from uh, drone attacks and small missile attacks from all sides to uh, wear the Iron Dome down and then the ballistic missiles come in, which the Iron Dome allegedly will not take out anyway. Right. So here's the thing. They were supposed to attack that, I guess, maybe three or four days ago. I yeah. think didn't they say that they're going to launch that attack three, mm -hmm. like maybe four days ago and they didn't. Right. And, and I think we had a discussion on here. Well, what do you think they're going to do? I was like, I don't know, because they put up, you know, um, they, they shut down their airspace. Or whatever right. they did, and, and you and you they announced they were shutting. They, they announced they were shutting down their airspace, and so as soon as we got offline, I started monitoring uh, the flight where um, flight tracker software, and um, their airspace was open. Yeah, so um, a lot of this might just be they're probing to see how um, Israel sets up. You see. Because well, you, they're going to be looking for that chink in the armor, okay? Mm -hmm. To find that find that weak spot and and hit it, okay? So I mean, because we talked about the Iron Dome before, and what happens if um, it gets hit, you know, with mm -hmm. with the whole with a whole barrage of missiles it gets like, overpowered, it, right? It gets overpowered. So what you know, and at, once it gets pummeled like it does is there another one behind it do they, is, do they, is there another one behind it you see yeah how, how many how many iron domes do they have do they have one two three so let's just say they have two and they bring the other one up so they're still they're gonna still keep shooting missiles same thing but when it but when it collapses and and like they it can't take any more uh missiles then guess what here comes Iran with drones and maybe uh, ICBM, right? Intercontinental uh, ballistic missiles. Mm -hmm. They're just going to tear Israel up. It's it's what's to be. You can't change that. the the latest The latest propaganda from Iran, and I'm saying it's propaganda because it's unproven information. It may be true, but the latest thing they're putting out is that their ballistic missiles launched from Iranian territory can hit Israel within six and a half minutes. Oh yeah. Easily. And I think they, I think they have hypersonic missiles too, don't they? Right. Right. So those, those hypersonic missiles. Yeah. You said six minutes. Yeah. 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 So and when, once that iron dome is taken down, you should start shooting those uh, hypersonic missiles. Israel's cooked. There's nothing they can do. Nothing they can do. Okay. What happens from here? We'll find out in the next couple of days. Yeah, sure. uh, you be on Monday night. Yeah. If you need me, I'll be, I'll be here Monday okay. night. Sounds good. Nine All right. Huh? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock Monday night. Unless we uh, get together Sounds beforehand. Good. If something happens, we do okay. something. All right. Sure enough. Thanks brother. As always. Peace, man. All right. Thank you. Good night. Always appreciate having Chris on. I appreciate you guys being here watching with us. Um, 
Guy Bassett not going away. Oh, the stunning one, cunning stunt. I hope you're all still here. Hello. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you're not in the chat, thank you for watching. If you're watching at your convenience, greatly appreciated. We are, uh, obviously we're discussing th some things that you may or may not be hearing on social or on, uh, mainstream media news because the narratives, um, what we're telling you don't, doesn't play into the narratives. So if you're just recently enjoyed, just recently joined us, go back to the beginning. I did, uh, I read some reviews on the movie civil war. Um, I did a recorded episode last night. Check that out about, it's about eight minutes long and, uh, without giving away any, any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of giveaways of, as far as, you know, making, ruining the movie for anybody. All right. Uh, none of that. I do recommend you go see the movie. If you're expecting a, um, uh, right ring, right wing propaganda, um, push to a civil war, you're going to be disappointed. And that's why the ratings are so low on it because a lot of the right, um, a lot of the people on the far right are disappointed in the way that the character of the president is portrayed to much more resemble Donald Trump than it is to Joe Biden. Let's put it that way. Thanks for watching. I do greatly appreciate it. We'll be back on uh, Monday at 9 PM. If not before, depending on what happens, love y'all like chocolate chip cookies. I mean that. Thank you for watching. It is a dark world. Do try to be a lie. I love y'all. Peace.